Welcome to the Inquendo Guitars Workshop for another part in the video series where I show you very in depth how I built one of my electric guitars. In this episode I'm going to make the covers for the control cavities on the back of the guitar and I'm going to glue in the neck so by the end of this episode we should have uh, yeah, something resembling an electric guitar. As you can see, I've already fitted my templates in the existing cavities on the guitar body and they're in you know, fairly tight, tight enough to be honest. You want to be able to remove these uh, cavity covers and I've already marked out their shape on this uh, cutoff from the top we did. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut these out on the bandsaw and I think I'm going to use uh, my miniature planing sled to get these to thickness. So, yeah, let's head to the pencil. A fairly easy job to do uh, making these uh, covers using my bandsaw and my trusty router table like I said in many videos before oh I'm sorry uh, I really love my router table it's such a useful asset to have around uh, with a couple of templates you can copy anything uh, in a couple of minutes uh, yeah I fit it in these two covers just to check the sizing and they're in not too snug but not too loose as well you want to be able to remove them this is just a little bit too tight I have some sanding to do when it's when it's done but for now it's fine and now I'm going to use my miniature router sled I think it's called just a base with two equally sized um, supports on the top kite rails or whatever and I made absolutely sure they're the same height and that when I run my router across it stays uh, the cutting bit the router bit is parallel with the bottom of this sl uh, router sled and I'm going to use my Triton router of course uh, with the support base that comes with these uh, routers I believe it's supplied with all Triton routers and this allows me to run my router over the router sled and I'm going to stick these plates to the bottom of the sled and this allows me to set an accurate depth on my router so I get a perfect, uh, as perfect as possible uh, thickness on these control uh, covers. Yeah, it wastes a bit of material of course um, I'm aware but I can't take the risk uh, I can't take the risk uh, of my blade when cutting it with a saw with a pencil like I said before uh, to slip or to go at an angle or something and this is the most accurate way uh, without having a planar thicknesser uh, or a drum sander or something to get these to the perfect thickness without slipping up and I only have to remove three and a half millimeters at most so it's a very quick and easy job to do uh, with a router and a jig like this so yeah, let me set things up, let me put this in a time lapse and I'll be right back. So I'm all set to go. As you can see, I've taped uh, the cover to the base of the router sled or mini router sled, clamped it to my workbench, uh, hooked up some dust extraction and uh, the router is all set to go. Uh, yeah, now it's, I've marked out the amount I need to remove and I leave just a little extra and when sanding the body I will sand flush at the control uh, cover plate 
as well. So yeah, nothing else to do but to start and planing this down to the desired thickness. I don't know if you can see anything while I'm busy because it's all covered up, even for me it's hard to see, um, but I'll do my best to give you some shots of what I'm doing, but I think this explains uh, rather well uh, what I'm doing. So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Control cover plates are nearly done. I'm very pleased how the one for the tremolo cover turned out, or the tremolo springs turned out. Uh, it's exactly flush with the rest of the guitar body. Um, the other one is taking, yeah, I think half a mil proud, but that's fine. Uh, I can sand it flush with the rest of the body, and then when I'm going to fine sand the entire body. I can send these two cover plates along with it so they stay nice and level and flush with the rest of the body. It's something I always do. I always keep them in and I make sure they're in while I'm going to sand the back of the guitar body so I know these cover plates will always fit and they're always nice and flush with the back. I'm going to sand this one flush for the control cavity. I'm going to send it flush with the rest of the body. I'm going to lightly sand the entire back of the body and then it's time to finally glue it in there. That's the Springfield. Yeah, this is starting to look absolutely great. I've got a real nice fit on this cover plate. Really excited about this one. Yeah, there's just a little bit of grain, <coughs> a weird spot in the grain, which I'm going to try and send, send out some more. But now with the cover plates uh, in place I can just keep sanding until I'm satisfied with the result and I've got plenty of depth or thickness in my cover plates that allows for more sanding I always aim for uh, a three three and a half millimeter thick cover plate and this is still near four millimeters so I can send it back just a little, plenty of thickness left, yeah I'm very pleased with the end result and now the next step is uh, fitting in and gluing in the neck. Can you tell I've been sweating, everything is wet and sticky. Let me clean this up a bit. Now the next job is to glue in the neck, but before I get to actually gluing in the neck, I need to check a couple of things. Uh, I need to check once again the break angle of the neck, and to do that I need my bridge to be in place. Uh, so I need to insert the threaded studs for the Floyd Rose Tremolo. Uh, fairly easy job. Make sure the holes are deep enough and they are in this case undo the actual stud itself so you have only the threaded insert press it in the hole and I like to use the smallest hammer I have or one of the not a big hammer but just a small hammer make sure it's goes in as straight as possible 
tap it in and then I'm going to use just a piece of dowel or another piece of wood on top of the threaded insert. So just tap it in gently and yeah, when you have to hit it too hard, yeah, try to remove the insert and just widen the hole a little. Don't bang it in because you have a chance the small piece of wood um, in your cavity will split or it can split so make sure it goes in it has to go in tight but not as tight that you really have to hit it hard and that's why I like to use just a light small hammer uh, yeah I think this gives me just a little bit more control on what I'm doing so tap it in until it's flush uh, with your cavity And now we can insert the studs themselves and using a piece of wood just prevents you damaging the threaded insert. And now this is also the first time I'm going to actually check all the measurements uh, we done for the tremolo route. Wow, <laughs> I did a very nice job when routing the tremolo cavity, it's in perfect. Next up I'm going to use just a bit of foam, try to tuck it in. Let's see if I can make the tremolo sit in the cavity. Yeah, like it would when the strings are attached. And let's fit the neck. And I hope my string height is correct. And otherwise, this is the only uh, yeah, occasion left to modify the brake angle of the neck somewhat, if needed. Make sure your neck is in correct. Couple of rulers. And it seems my tremolo sits a little too low at the moment. I have to adjust my neck angle ever so slightly, unfortunately. So after setting up the bridge the way I want it to end up in the final guitar and doing some measurements, uh, I found out that although <laughs> We took great care my neck angle is a little bit too much but I still have some spare uh, material on the heel of the neck so I can lower it or lower it or adjust it to get a correct uh, yeah, break angle on my neck to fit this setup uh, for my bridge so yeah so yeah this is why I always say check check double check triple check um, your work before you commit to anything um, even although we did great measurements we were very precise in our planning um, yeah things can always turn out differently than you expected and that's why yeah I like to check everything um, and keep as much margin for myself to correct any mistakes while I'm working on a guitar and in this case uh, I really thought the um, 
string height for the bridge would be just a millimeter or uh, one or two higher than it is uh, at the moment. So, but luckily I have some extra material on the heel of my neck so I can lower it uh, on the end of the heel so I get a correct break angle for my neck. So yeah, let me do that real quick. Um, yeah, I'm not going to film it. Um, it's just a matter of planing off just a little bit from the underside of the heel, fit it again, and I'll be back to you when I'm really ready to glue in this neck. So I adjusted the heel of the neck just ever so slightly, and now I have a very nice uh, string action, I think, when I'm done. Uh, it's touching all the frets here, and it's resting uh, on the saddle of the bridge. So that should be much better than the <laughs> two mils uh, I had just before. Yeah, I adjusted the neck using a couple of my small planes and took just a sliver off, uh, starting at the front of the neck, fitted it, tested it, uh, going back and forth until I'm at where I'm at right now. And that's where I'm ready to start gluing in the neck. And yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, this time I did everything correct and it should be correct. And there's no turning back. Uh, after this point. So let's clean up the bench a little, remove the bridge. So that's all set and there's one thing left to do uh, and it has to do with the heel of the neck as well. So of course before I can really glue in the neck I need to remove a lot of material from the heel. And you can see I've already marked it out where I want to cut this and it's yeah, along with the pickup cavity of course. I will remark it. This has to re be removed and I can also using my pencil in the pickup cavity mark out what needs to be removed because I just changed. Uh, the neck angle, I will also measure it what I need to remove. Lock it in place. 19 and a half millimeters needs to, remove, re needs to be removed from this block. Get it out. So here's my markings. That needs to be removed and I'm going to use just regular hand saws, Japanese saw perhaps, most likely, <laughs> to remove this block and then we can finally glue in our neck and we finally will have a guitar. So I've marked out all the lines uh, where I need to make my cut and I've traced them uh, with a scalpel blade. Unfortunately I don't have any good solution of uh, clamping this down so I filled out my neck so it is as stable as I can get it for now and I'm going to use my Japanese saw to make these cuts as best as I can and I hope if I take it slow I will be alright I guess I will be That's a nice thing about woodworking, if you give yourself just a little bit of extra material um, to spare, to play with, you can always clean up and work your way uh, to the desired dimensions. You don't have to be precise the first time at all. Uh, that is for cutting jobs. Drilling is another <laughs> Drilling is something else, drilling a hole is something else, but when you have, need to do a cut, yeah, give yourself a bit of extra so you can work your way up to your final dimensions. This 
should be one cut. Try and find a way to clamp this in and do the other cut. So I found a way to clamp this in. Um, fairly easy piece of cork and of course some foam and rubber um, to protect the fretboard and the rest of the neck. Uh, yeah, it's in. So I can make this cut, I hope. Might be yelling at your screen right now you're using the wrong saw but I don't care it works and I like this saw a lot so I'm going to use it of course I could use my band saw but yeah I have this done much quicker by hand than setting up my band saw and such do this one cut up oh, not, not, not much there. Although it's it's still inside of the pickup cavity, but uh, yeah, I like to clean it up as well. So this is what the cavity looks like now, and you can see the edge there is nice and flush with the rest of the pickup cavity. The bottom is nice, nice fit, yep, a nice fit on the neck joint. And now it's time to glue the neck in place. Now it's really time to glue in the neck. Um, yeah, I had to open the door. It's over 30 degrees Celsius here in the workshop. Uh, so the lighting might be a bit off. It's a bit overexposed at some points, I think. Uh, yeah, time to remove the neck for the last time and uh, I've put my body on a template so when I put in a clamp uh, yeah it won't damage uh, the body and the delicate carve we did in the back and I've prepared the block I just removed from the neck I made a, a chamfer all around it and put some masking tape on the back and I can use this as a clamping block uh, to clamp in my neck and the masking tape should prevent it from gluing itself back in place. So that's prepared. I've got my clamps, some brushes, glue. Yeah, fingers crossed. And here we go. I'm going to dust off. Make sure there's no dust in the cavity. This should be clean. I, I don't recommend sanding this, even though it seems yeah, a little dirty. I leave it as is. I won't touch this with sandpaper or whatever. Um, it should be fine uh, to glue in. This is a fresh prepared surface. Uh, so we should be fine. If you, yeah, the chance when sanding the sides of the heel at the moment, yeah, it can change the entire alignment of the guitar. So leave that alone. It's a tight fit. We should be fine. So some glue, clamp, brush. Here we go. I always first coat the entire bottom of the cavity, then the back, and I wait with covering the sides with glue until the last moment, because as soon as I apply glue, the wood will swell up a little, and it makes it real hard to get your neck in with such a tight fit. So make sure. 
not blue here. The angle the key to the sides. Don't use too much glue. Especially not near the top. Because we don't want any squeeze out on the top of the guitar. Because it might prevent uh, coloring seeping in when we're going to stain this guitar. Fingers crossed, here we go. I usually have... Oh, we were just in time, just in time. I used the clamp. I think this is the easiest neck glue I've ever done. Usually I have to really press it in. I'm also learning with every guitar build I do uh, and this trick of doing this gluing in the sides of the cavity at the last moment yeah, is something I just realized on this guitar build it's not quite in there yet here we go and there was a bit too much glue it's dripping out on all sides but first make sure it's clamped in perfectly and then of course do a clean up straight away I think I got very lucky there's no squeeze out near my top and even on the sides of the neck joint, which is very hard to sand. Um, um, there's almost nothing, just a fraction. I think I can remove it. Yeah, my template is dripping with glue, but it's only a template, so I don't care. Really put some pressure on it. And I'm absolutely sure that any glue that's underneath will disperse evenly and there's no chance of my neck wobbling on glue anywhere this is maybe the only joint where I yeah, really put on some force and really put some force on the clamp just to make absolutely sure these two pieces of wood are <laughs> absolutely touching each other because we did great, we went to a great amount of troubles uh, getting these two surfaces to fit absolutely perfectly. And I don't want any glue interfering with that. I'm go temporarily going to remove this clamp just to do a quick check if I may need a, a second clamp further up the neck to pull it back. A little but I think I'm fine. Because there's a yeah, slight chance of there being just a thousands of a millimeter of glue uh, at the other end of the heel and then the neck angle changes. Yeah, I need to press it down ever so slightly. Good idea to check. It's not much, ever so slightly. So quickly return this clamp. Put it as much to the headstock size as I can get it. Maybe this will be enough. I think it will. I think this is more than enough. You can see even a little bit of glue um, can not really mess up your work but can alter things a bit. It's such a precision job fitting the neck and getting the angle uh, the way you want it. Like always, check, check, double check, triple check uh, everything you do. 
just to make sure you don't have any unexpected results uh, when the time comes you want to set up your guitar now all we can do is wait for the glue to dry uh, it will take a couple of hours but I will be right back to you to show you the end result so the glue on the neck joint is cured or has dried or whatever you like to call it yeah and now for the first time I have a real good feel for this guitar it's very well balanced uh, very light of course I'm going to add some weight when I'm going to, uh, when I go and install the hardware but yeah up until this point I'm very happy how this is turning out um, yeah and that's also where I'm going to leave it for this week's episode it's been a long episode once again I really can't get these episodes under half an hour and a part of me doesn't want to make them under half an hour I really like doing these elaborate videos but please let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are and uh, on these episodes do you think they're too long are they too short too elaborate not enough information wrong information yeah I'm very curious to know what you guys think of these this format of episodes so yeah leave a comment in the comment section down below and while you're there hit that like button if you did like this video uh, or if you just want to help grow the Incredible Guitars community and of course subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any of my content uh, yeah so that's it uh, I'm not going to bore you in the next episode with hours and hours of sanding that's what I'm going to do this week off camera it's a lot a lot of sanding uh, and I don't want to bore you guys uh, <laughs> with just me sanding in the next episode I'll start applying the color to this guitar and I've got something in mind I'm going to do some off-camera test pieces to see if the idea I have will work on this, uh, on this guitar so if you like to see some color applied to this guitar you have to check out next week's episode uh, so I hope to see you there but until then have a nice week